and welcome back to my podcast. My name is Sophie, but I'm better known as the Knit Pearl Girl over on Instagram, Ravelry, and I guess also here. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, I want to start by saying a massive, like massive heartfelt thank you for all of the really, really kind comments on the podcast I uploaded about six weeks ago. Um, I felt very nervous about um, posting anything on YouTube uh, and you were so lovely and it really meant a lot to me so thank you so much. Um, where there was feedback it was constructive and I'm going to try and work on speaking more clearly and more slowly in this video but please do bear with me. Uh, when you kind of get into the flow of rambling about stuff that makes me excited uh, it, it's quite difficult to modulate and moderate I guess your speech patterns but I, I'm working on it. Um, I've also bought a new microphone so I'm hoping that that will improve the audio quality overall but let me know how that goes and if it's no good I will return it and get another one. Um, but yeah I hope that you are well and that you've had a good few weeks since we last caught up. Um, I've been good, I've been really busy. I've uh, <laughs> I've got a lot of finished objects to show you um, I've only got one work in progress, but I've got a lot of yarn to talk about. I've got a lot of finished objects to talk about and I'm very excited to get started. I do just want to say before we get into things that I am aware that this is a lot of finished objects between podcasts. I'm aware that it's not a normal amount to have made. Uh, if this wasn't my full time job, I couldn't do it. And I don't want to give the impression that I think it's normal from like a hand health perspective, if nothing else. Um, I just want, I just want that caveat, ca uh, words. I just want that caveat in here. Make of that what you will. The first thing that I will talk about is what I'm wearing. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six finished objects to talk you through today. Uh, and yeah, let's start with this one. So this is, this is this. Um, it is called the Conwy Vest um, or Conwy Slipover. I haven't decided yet. Um, and it is a very simple drop shoulder style slipover um, with this lovely, very simple four stitch cable running down the middle. Um, this is inspired by a trip um, we took to North Wales over the, um, oh that's loud, uh, over the bank holiday weekend at the end of August here in the UK. Um, I think it's across the UK, sorry if not. Um, but yeah, we were visiting a friend who lives uh, in Snowdonia, um, Aleri National Park, uh, and it was amazing. It was such a good trip. We had such a good time. Um, we, sorry, this is irrelevant to the knitting, but we summited Snowdon um, and, yeah it was um so rainy it was so rainy we got so cold it was it was a lot but we did it and it was fine um but we did another walk whilst we were there around um some of the kind of waterfalls the conway falls and it inspired this um i was actually knitting on it whilst we were away but i thought the name was very fitting it is made with let me grab the yarn Here we go. Um, it's made with Telling Yarns um, Resolute. This is a beautiful British world. Beth, who is Telling Yarns, is so lovely. She's she's really great and her yarn is gorgeous. So most of her yarn is hand dyed in these very soft, tonal, really beautiful shades. Um, they always remind me of st stained glass. And like when you look at the light cast through a stained glass window, it always gives me that kind of vibe. It's, re it's really lovely. Um, as I said in my last podcast, I'm not actually a huge hand dyed yarn person. It makes me stressed, <laughs> uh, but I, I really enjoy Beth's yarns, um, telling yarns. And this is the natural base shade. So this is what she dyes over. And it's a really beautiful um, heathered light gray. Um, I'm not gonna, do that in this video because I realised when I was editing the previous podcast that the um, autofocus on my camera is broken. Uh, I think because I dropped it. Not great. Uh, <laughs> but oh well, so I will put some b-roll of the colour in 
here. Um, it's a really gorgeous yarn. So the fibre is 50% Blueface Leicester, 30% Romney, 15% Masham and 5% um, Svelbles. Um, and it's gorgeous. I hope I pronounced that last word right. Sorry if not. Um, it is a mixture of white, pale grey and a little bit of black which I think is the Svelbles. And it knits up so beautifully. I did hold it with a strand of mohair. Um, this is all that's left. I am 99% sure that this is Sanders Garn Tin Silk Mohair in the shade Putty. I'm 90% sure. I have a, where, where I knit a lot, um, I, in case it wasn't apparent, I knit a lot. <laughs> um, and where I obviously mostly work on my own designs, I don't follow patterns, I will quite often buy slightly too much yarn and then I've got a little Ikea Kallax storage thing like like one of these but smaller um with like my leftover odds and sods basically um like if i've got a ball left over i just keep it in there and then i do dip into it when i'm swatching or if i'm making something with stripes or whatever but i only had 80 800 meters of um the telling yarns resolute and i was like i think that i've got 800 meters of this mohair or like 600 meters of this mohair um so i'm gonna risk it and it paid off. I think I've got a gram left, if that. So um, I need to work out, because I haven't written the pattern up yet, um, I need to work out exactly how much yarn I used and then I can figure out how, how close um, I came to total disaster. Uh, but yeah, I really like this pair. Um, Sanders Garn Tinsel Mohair has a about 15% wool, if I recall correctly, that might be wrong. Um, but it has got some wool in it, so it is a more substantial mohair. It's why I, I really like it. And I wanted something woollier, that's quite hard to say, woollier, um, to match, you know, the lovely British wool here. And yeah, it's a great fibre, co uh, great combination. Um, I think the cable is, is gorgeous. I think it's just the right amount of definition. Um, the rib has been really nice and I did my favourite shoulder construction which is like this so you um you work increases on the right side and the wrong side um to shape the shoulders so you cast on for the back neck increase out and then some underarm shaping um and yeah I'm, I'm so so thrilled with it I'm going to make a sweater version of this as well but I will I will talk about that more later on in the podcast um, and I'm just deciding which yarn I want to use. I'm kind of tempted to just buy more of this and make like a full sweater in the, in, in this colour because I, I think it, it's quite nice on me. I've recently realised that I suit cool tone neutrals a lot better than I suit warm tone neutrals. I find it very hard. I find my undertones quite difficult to suss out because my mum is very olive skinned. My dad was quite, he tanned really easily, but he was quite English rose colouring, but he had very dark hair. And obviously I don't so I this isn't this isn't relevant <laughs> but yeah I find it very difficult to know what suits me best but I've realized like I think light gray is quite good um but yeah I'm really pleased with it uh I am planning on writing up the pattern tomorrow uh or maybe even this afternoon depending on how long this takes to film uh and I will get a call for testers going soon I would like to release it in November which I think is okay because there's no sleeves it's quite quick to knit um, I think I made, I mean, I, I'm a fast knitter and obviously this is my job so I can have like long knitting sessions, but I think I made this in like four days and that's including being away in that time. So it's, it was a very quick knit for me. Um, but obviously mileage may vary on that front. But yeah, really recommend the yarn. Really um, very pleased with how this worked up. And I think that's all I've got to say about this. And I'm already 12 minutes in. <laughs> great or eight minutes in I think that's yeah eight minutes in that's not too bad um I did pick up at Unravel Autumn which was this weekend just gone um this yarn from the Raw Wool Company based down in Cornwall this is there on a dark and stormy night which is undyed British Wensleydale long wool so it has a very nice luster can you see that I hope you can see that it helps if I probably show you one that hasn't got a label on but can you see how it's catching the light don't what's wrong with me um maybe this would be a nice option but then would you see the cable 
I might just watch it and see how I feel. Um, but these are about the same weight. I'm going to swatch this. I think that could be good because I've got a sweater quantity of this. So maybe that's an option. Hmm. That's only just occurred to me, but I quite like that idea. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Finished object one, done. <laughs> Finished object two. Um, so in chronological, in chronological order, this is actually the first thing that I finished after I made the last podcast and it's a baby knit. It's not for me. I am not with child. Uh, <laughs> but every now and then it's nice to do a baby knit because they are just so quick to make. Um, and a lot of my friends have had or are having babies at the moment, which is very exciting. So uh, I've got baby knits on the brain, but I also want to start making new design ideas as baby knits first because I can do them in like one or two sittings um, before making a full adult sample. So yeah, I'm trying to get into the practice of doing that. But anyway, that doesn't matter. This does. Um, this is the Loddon Sweater Baby. That's L-O-D-D-O-N. It's a river here in Hampshire where I live, um, kind of near to a place called Basingstoke. Um, it's very, very glamorous. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was like a nice kind of relaxed, in my head it made sense. <laughs> uh, but it's a little raglan with a Henley neckline. Um, it's very cute. This would be the three month size. Um, I need to make another sample because I did adjust the grading slightly when I went to write up the pattern, but this is in testing at the moment and the pattern will be available at the end of the month. Um, I used Phil Kalana Oetta. Let me grab it. Seamless, seamless transition. Um, Phil Kalana Arveta in the shade Marzipan. I am going to make my second sample. Caroline, if you're watching this, look away <laughs> in Red Squirrel. Um, hint, hint, <laughs> Caroline, if you do watch this. Uh, and I think that's going to be really cute. I'm going to make a smaller size for my second sample. Um, Phil Kalana Arveta is a yarn that I'm sure many people watching this are familiar with, but it is uh, commonly used as a sock yarn. It is a superwash merino and nylon blend. Yeah, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I am personally not a huge fan of superwash yarn. I don't care if you use it. I have no opinions about that whatsoever. I do not enjoy knitting with it and I do not enjoy wearing it um, and same as synthetic fibres, it's a personal preference thing. It's just not for me, it's not my cup of tea. Um, however, for baby knits, I think it's great. Um, and I don't, I feel like if you're gifting a baby knit, you know, you don't want have to, to have to make people be like, you must hand wash it in, you know, and all this, when somebody's got a newborn, they don't, they don't need that. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice yarn, very lovely to knit with. I held it double and I used a four and a half, oh, Four millimetre needle, US six for the Conwy vest slip over. I meant to say that. But yeah, I used a four and a half millimetre needle, which is a US seven. Um, and the gauge is 21 stitches by 28 rows or rounds. Um, you knit the yoke flat and then you join in the round for the body and for the sleeves. And then you pick up stitches to work each side of the kind of V shape for the neckline picking up stitches along the edge here, and then you do short rows um, to connect the flat bit of the neckline. Um, so it's, it's quite easy uh, and is really fun to do, and is something that I've since done a lot. We'll get onto that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this is really cute. I'm not a very experienced baby knitter. Um, my mum is a great knitter of stuff for babies. She has been known to follow neighbours who are visibly pregnant and be like, do you need any baby knits? Which is, great it's very sweet um but I do have a couple I've done a couple I made baby pat versions of um my Aosta sweater and Aosta cardigan um about two years ago uh and they're very sweet and I love seeing people make them it's really cute um yeah it's very sweet so thanks if you've made one of these I really appreciate it uh but yeah it's nice to dabble in some baby stuff every now and then because like I say, they're quick to do. I can kind of get ideas out of my brain, which is always good. Um, Cause otherwise it just gets a lot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, baby Loddon. Okay, 
from making that baby knit, I knew that I wanted to make myself a version. So I made the adult Lodden sweater. Um, again, I will have B-roll of me wearing it here and be the first sample here and I'll do one of the second sample in a bit. Um, so add the yarn in this next portion of the video was very kindly gifted to me by Knitting for Olive. Same, same idea, it is a very simple raglan sweater with a Henley neckline. Um, I used Knitting for Olive No Waste Wool uh, as the base yarn and I held that with a strand of their soft silk mohair. I can't remember the colour names off the top of my head but I think it's dark navy for the no waste wool and then dark blue for the mohair and I've got a feeling they actually don't make that colour anymore. I think I might have bought the last batch of that, I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll put something, all of the yarn info will be in the description box. But yeah, exact same idea. Um, you work the yoke flat and then you join in the round for the body and the sleeves. Um, the first sample I really like and I've worn it a lot. Um, I did make it a bit too big. I've changed size recently and it's taken me, um, well actually it's got nothing to do with that. I just kind of did the maths wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's part that I've changed size recently and I'm still in the mindset of making the size I used to be and then I'm like, oh, this doesn't fit the way I wanted it to. Nightmare. And then also, um, I went through a phase a couple of years ago of using Knitting for Olive Merino with their mohair a lot. It was like my go-to yarn combination because it's just it's just easy. Like it's, I was very stressed at the time and it's such like a nice, easy to use, easy to wear yarn, fibre combination that uh, I found it very soothing to use. Um, and I think because I was so stressed at the time, my gauge was a lot tighter and uh, my tension has relaxed by two stitches in 10 centimetres. So I blithely went in to making this, assuming, which is very foolish, uh, that my gauge would be 21 stitches um, as it was for the baby sweater. And it wasn't, was it? Of course not. So that was annoying. Um, but yeah, it's still very wearable. I wear it a lot. Uh, but it is a bit too big, um, but that's fine. It's nice for like cozy days. Um, the no waste wool is lovely. Uh, I've got that much left because they very kindly sent me a cone. Um, so I don't actually know how much yarn was on the cone, uh, but I've managed to get a wrap cardigan with it held double with some other yarn out of it and this, and I think I've got enough for at least one more jumper and a slip over. So very nice this is what it looks like no why am i doing this i've already said that i'm not the camera doesn't focus i'll have b-roll here of what it looks like um in the cake really nice really enjoyed using it it feels very similar to the knitting for olive merino um especially in this darker shade uh it's great it's 50 percent merino wool 50 percent recycled wool nothing not to like so yeah, where I really like this design, uh, but the, the fit had issues for my first sample, I then went ahead and cast on a second sample. So this is the second one. Oh, and the sun has come out just in time for me to show you. Um, so this is a better fit. I uh, just adjusted the grading so that it worked with the gauge. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, I've only worn this twice so far, but I can tell already that this is gonna be very useful for me. This autumn winter um i like again it's like a beige but it's a very it's very grayish very sad grayish uh but it's the shade powder in no waste wool and the mohair is also powder from knitting for olive matchy matchy very nice you can see the neckline detail a lot better here um i'm hoping this is focusing but yeah very pleased with that um i bought this yarn quite a while ago i think i bought it when knitting for olive launched no waste wool so yeah i i bought all the yarn for this and i bought the mohair for the blue sample just to be clear um so yeah that is what powder looks like in the no waste wool um really nice it's like i say it is a, it is a sad grayish but that's okay sometimes you need a neutral and that's fine <laughs> Uh, and then that is what the mohair looked like. 
it's sad yeah no, no nothing really to say about that um i initially was going to use it for a drop shoulder design that i realized i didn't like and also i had been impatient and i hadn't knitted enough of the front before i joined in the round so i might come back to the idea but not at the moment uh but it was for this slip stitch texture which is quite cool i like it i'm just gonna have like a big big old roll neck i might i might come back to it i might not i'm gonna see see how i feel i might block this and see how it works up i don't know i've made a couple of mistakes that i can now see i was making this over christmas last year and i'd had a wine not good <laughs> but yeah anyway lod and sweater lovely really pleased with it useful basic I am aiming to have this released, so the Conmy vest, slip over, whatever I call it, I think is going to be mid-November, and then I would like this to be end of November. I will aim to have a call for testers going, um, which I'll post about by the end of this week. It's Tuesday as I film this. I'm going to try and edit this video tonight, so I, keep, keep your eyes peeled on the community tab. If not, I will post this with links to the test knit. We'll see, see how I go. Oh, the other thing with this sample, I was just filming the B-roll. Um, I got dilotted. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if it's the mohair or the no waste wool, but one of them is a different dilot for the yoke compared to the body. I suspect you can see it better on camera than you can in real life, but maybe not. Um, it was only really apparent when I washed and blocked this sample. But yeah, the yoke is a different colour. <laughs> Slightly. It's very subtle. Um, I don't think you can see it. No, I don't think you can actually. Um, I should have been more careful. I kind of assumed because I ordered it in one go, it would be fine, but you know, it happens, it's fine. Um, and also I made the sleeves wider for the second sample because they were too narrow on the first sample. I think you can see in the footage of me wearing it that that sample wants to sit like this and it's because the sleeves are too narrow at the shoulder so grading fun um but this sample i think the fit is very nice so this is why i love stocking at raglan's because you can get such a precise perfect fit so satisfying okay. next finish object same idea different execution um so yeah as i said with the baby lodden sweater uh i've really enjoyed that kind of henley kind of rectangular neckline um and i wanted to iterate on that again um the last few weeks so this um this is the stanford sweater this color is very hard to capture on camera um it was a journey getting to this design which is oh i'm so pretentious sorry <laughs> um but basically uh last december so 2023 i bought some Isaya Jensen um, in this amazing shade of royal blue and mohair and they aren't, they look a closer match on camera than they are in real life. This is very, very vivid. This is slightly more muted. I would say that this is like a true navy blue, whereas this is a true royal blue. Minor differences, but they are different. Um, and I wanted to make a cardigan version of one of my other patterns with it. Um, so I wanted to make, this is my Marlowe sweater, which I think I released in January this year. So this is made in Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo, I think, um, with knitting for olive mohair. And it's just like a nice, easy raglan sweater. It's got some shaping through the body. So it makes like a trapeze shape, like a trapezoid. That's not what that is. Da, 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 that through the front. So it's very, um, I find it very flattering. Um, not that that matters, but it's easy to wear. Uh, and it's got like a nice, I'll, I'll film me wearing it because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to describe it very well. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make a cardigan version of this because I've gotten a lot of wear out of this jumper over the last year. And I thought a cardigan would be really nice. And I still do want to make a Marlowe cardigan, but that is not what happened here. Instead, we got this. So I cast on with the stitch counts from the Marlowe cardigan and I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't like it. So I ripped it out, 
tweaked the stitch counts and started over. So they're, they're similar, but they aren't the same. There's like a couple of, the back is slightly wider. It's different. Um, and I started making it as if to be a cardigan until about 10 centimeters, no, not even that, five centimeters into the body. And I was like, nah, I wanna, I wanna join in the round. I wanna make this uh, a big old circle. Um, and I think, yeah, I also did body decreases instead of body increases. Because yeah, the last few months I've realized that uh, I, I like shaping through the body of a lot of my garments, but I like decreases. Not, I wouldn't call it waist shaping because it isn't for my waist, it's actually kind of for my hips. So I've got shaping through here as well and a lot of my drop shoulder sweaters that I've made recently, I've done it too and I, I find it quite flattering for my shape. Um, so yeah, I've done that in this as well. So yeah, it's joined in the round and then the rest of the body is knit just in stockinette and then it's got about eight centimetres to about just over three inches of rib um, and this super lovely squishy neckline. Um, I did make the buttonholes slightly wonky. Um, they are, there's 10 stitches between most of the buttonholes, but there's one where it's 12 stitches and it really bothers me. It's very upsetting. <laughs> I know, get a grip. Um, but I went for these lovely toggle buttons that I think are quite trendy at the moment and they're just from Hemline. Um, I bought these at Hobbycraft, which is a UK based crafting chain on the high street. They're really nice. I really like them. I love the warm brown shade. I wanted more of a chocolate brown. I wanted something more like that, actually. Can you see that colour properly? I hope so. Um, but I couldn't find anything and I couldn't, I didn't want to order anything online. Um, but yeah, I'll have clips of me wearing this here. Um, I'm going to get so much use out of this. I can tell already. Um, my partner and I walk a lot. Um, like we, we love a good, good long walk and I think it's going to be so useful, um, kind of in lieu of a, of a fleecy jumper. Um, I really like it and I love this blue. Um, I think I've said what the name is. It's the Stamford sweater. Um, so my family are really, really, really big Chelsea um, fans. Like at Christmas, we have a Chelsea rosette on our Christmas tree. It's very cool. Um, and it's also 10 years since my dad died this year. And I wanted to like do a Chelsea related <laughs> pattern kind of in his memory a bit. Um, and I, I actually, when I bought this yarn, I made my brother, I'll put a picture here, a colour work Chelsea FC cow, which was really fun to knit. Um, I, I really enjoyed making that because it is just such a good Chelsea blue. Uh, but yeah, st the, where Chelsea play is, is Stamford Bridge um, up in West London. So yeah, Stamford sweater for, for CFC. Um, yeah, same idea with the neckline. As I said, it's just thicker. And I did a double folded collar and obviously it's got that goes with like the thicker raglan. So I think, I think this is a very nice cohesive design. I'm aiming again to get this written up this week and in testing uh, for a December release. Yeah, really nice, really cozy, very pleased with this one. Um, and I would definitely recommend the yarn. It is the same yardage as Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, but it has less of a matte finish. I don't know how else to describe it. The um, Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino is lovely. I really like it. It has a dry finish almost. It's, because I know that a lot of people when they first use it are a bit disappointed because it isn't super soft in the way that their regular fingering weight Merino is. It It is sheepier. And even though this isn't merino and it is also quite sheepy, it has more luster. I think that's what I mean. The heavy merino doesn't have luster. Whereas this, I think even here, at least as far as I can see on my viewfinder. Um, yeah, really nice. I'm gonna make myself a hat with what I've got left. Um, I think that'll be very useful. Uh, and I've got very high tolerance to wool. Um, so I think that'd be brilliant. Done. Finally, in the finished objects, um, the Senon sweater. This is kind of, I kind of, I don't have anything much to say about it because I spoke about this project extensively in the last podcast. So if you're curious, it's the first thing I talk about in that video. Um, but I did want to, and I also show a clip of it 
on once it had been blocked. So I'm not going to go super in depth here. If you want that, check out the other video. But it's finished. I love it. Um, this is made with Marina Skewer Mendip DK. Beautiful yarn. It's it's so nice. Um, and I love it. I don't, yeah, it's great. Um, this is in testing at the moment and will be released at the end of October. I love it. Um, I have, can you see it? I don't know if you can. Yeah, I've made a swatch for the four ply version, which you can see here. I'll put some B-roll a bit closer up. Um, and I've gone for the Marina's uh, four ply yarn. I've gone for the cloudy base and, ooh, what the colors. In these colors. Um, so this is night and this is sheep, sheepy, sheep. Uh, but yeah, they're both on her cloudy base. So I made these on the sunny base which is so that's the natural color and that is the shade sky um they're gorgeous i love the colors so much um so yeah she does all of her colors on this base and the off-white sheepy base um they're both gorgeous uh so soft i love it um and yeah this time i'm going for a dark main color and a lighter contrast color um, very excited about the four ply version. The plan is to go ahead with the DK release, knit this four ply version kind of in my own time, have that tested and then send out an update with the four ply version. Um, I'm only going down half a needle size so I made the one that I've just shown you, the finished sample, on a four millimeter US 6 needle and then I'm going to use a three and a half millimeter needle US 4 I think. Four? Yeah. Um, to make the four ply version. So the stitch counts aren't going to be that different. So I feel a bit bad releasing it as a totally separate pattern when it is just going to be like very, very, very slightly different. But it, the swatches feel quite different. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. I'm not going to give it any kind of timeline on that front because I've got six million other things that I want to make in the meantime, but it's ready for me when I want it. I think if I could have it maybe ready for February, I think that would be good. Um, yeah, we'll see. So those are all the finished objects. Uh, it's a lot. I know it's a lot. Um, I'm a very fast knitter. I have, I alternate between kind of laptop heavy weeks and knitting weeks where I kind of do just sit and knit. It's great. I love it. Um, but that's kind of how I'm able to, and also I'm, I'm short. I've got a short body. I'm relatively small. I can I can get through a sample fairly quickly when I'm when I'm like on a mission. Um yeah, just just for context. I know it's a lot. Um there will be fewer finished objects I think in the next podcast, but that depends on when I feel there. There might I don't know actually. No, there should be fewer. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, works in progress. I've only got one. So yeah, there probably will be less to talk about next time. Enough rambling. Um so yeah, this is the sweater for my fiance uh, that I mentioned last time. We've made quite a lot of progress. Um, I have split the sleeves and I've done about five centimeters of the body. This is, I think, three balls of Sanaskan Pig in, in. I need to do about another 35 centimeters of the body and then I can do the rib. I am using Sanazgarn Peergint. Uh, I'm pretty sure the shade name is Charcoal Melange, um, but it's from the Petite Knit Shade Card and it's shade 1065. And uh, Isaiah Alpaca 1, uh, this is the shade 4S. And again, it's a, it's a charcoal grey. Um, they're a very nice match. I really like them together. And I absolutely love how they've knitted up so far. Um, I'm definitely gonna use this combination again in the future. It's sheepy. Oh, sorry, I can feel myself talking fast. Sorry. <laughs> um, see this? I get overexcited. Uh, yeah, it feels sheepy, but I think that it, especially when it's blocked, is gonna feel really, really lovely. Um, it smells good. Um, it smells like it smells like wool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this is a very simple, again, 
I'm, I'm having a raglan moment again. I haven't made many raglan sweaters for a while and then I've gotten kind of back into it. Um, this has a two stitch raglan, so it's a little bit, a little bit more going on. Um, and I've done a double folded collar because I just love them. Uh, yeah, not an awful lot to talk about with this really. Um, I am still aiming to get this ready. We're getting married in early November and I want to present it <laughs> at the wedding. I think that'd be quite funny, like a whole um, curse of the boyfriend sweater thing, being like, I couldn't possibly give this to you before the wedding. Ha ha ha. Um, I, know it's, I know it's a silly thing, but I thought that'd be quite funny. Um, yeah, so that's how that's going. I thought I would show you the last sweater that I made, Chris. This I made in 2019. It was the first thing I successfully knit in the round. It's the petite knit hand sewn sweater. And it's great, like it is really nice. I don't really have anything bad to say about the pattern, although I haven't looked at it for five years. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, I think I've mentioned in the last podcast that uh, garments I'd made him previously, I hadn't yet understood yarn weight and gauge. So this is like thick. This is We Are Knitters Petite Wool, which was intended to be used on a eight millimeter US 11 needle. And I think I did this on a four millimeter US six needle. So um, you literally, light does not get through. <laughs> it's so heavy. I can't remember how many balls of wool I used, but like it's so heavy and it's a shame because I think the fit is otherwise really nice and like he does wear it bless him like it is um it's heavy like it feels like wearing a weighted blanket oh, it's actually quite soothing um I might steal this off him when he gets this this might become mine um it's actually worn really well I think even though it's a roving yarn I think because um it is knit on such like at such a strange gauge. There's like no pilling, which well, there's there's a bit, but considering it's roving, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a hack for you. <laughs> Even wearing this for a minute just to talk about it has made me really hot. Oh my. God. Okay, so those are all of the projects that I've got to talk about. Um, I thought I would talk a bit more about planning projects. Um, recently I got quite overwhelmed with how much I wanted to do and so I made a bunch of little drawings for myself. I love a board, I love a whiteboard, I love a pin board, I love, I love anything where I can externalise my ideas because otherwise I get, um, I don't know how else to describe it, but I get like fizzy brain and I started calling it that when I was an undergraduate um, so like coming up for 10 years ago, wow. No, it is 10 years ago, oh my goodness. Ah, where has the time gone? Um, but it's when I have like, I have so many ideas, it feels like my mind is fizzing and it's it's really annoying actually. Um, but I found that if I can get them on, down on paper, it really, really helps. So a couple of weeks ago, I was feeling very overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. I had like, five pieces of work that were all fairly urgent. It was only like editing, it wasn't anything that hard, but I just, yeah, I got quite, ugh. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw these ideas, get them out of my head and I will feel better. And it did work. So I thought I'd talk you through some of the ideas that I've got and what, where I'm kind of at with all of them. Okay, so I just went off on a massive tangent. I'm gonna delete that footage and we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, I found it very helpful to kind of plan out what I was going to make. I know a lot of people get on very well with um, knitting diaries for that reason. And I've tried them, but I get really into them for a week and then I forget that they exist. It's very irritating. So I made a, I put a blanket rule against myself buying journals or anything like that a year ago because I just, I get very into them short term and then yeah, it doesn't work. But I'm hoping that this will be a helpful way of managing my ideas. So I'm going to kind of keep on adding to this board um, for a while. So if I shuffle around, am I completely blocking the light? I think I might be. Yeah, that's probably good. Um, 
I realise if I get some red yarn, I could make it like a conspiracy theory board. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, would it? The first one I want to talk about is uh, a design that I'll put the B-roll here. Um, it's inspired by a lot of the garments that I've seen in Cezanne, which is my favourite um, placed window shop. Um, and I bought the yarn for it whilst we were up in Wales um, from You Felty Thing in Conwy, actually. Um, getting back to Conwy. Um, and it is going to be using more British wool, which I'm very pleased to talk about. Um, so this is from River Knits. It's another bright blue. <laughs> uh, and it's their yarn, I don't know how to pronounce it, if it's Neen or Nini uh, or Nene. I'm really sorry. Um, N-E-N-E. And this is the shade uh, Untervasavelt, and then Bar, because it's sheepy. And this is 100% Blue Face Leicester. Um, I've seen Rivenitz talk about their business at an event at John Arbon a couple of years ago, and they seem like such nice people. Uh, so yeah, lovely. I need to sneeze. So I've just had a really bad sneezing fit. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think it's done. Okay. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make, and actually somebody goes back to the baby knits, so I don't know if I'm like brandishing the yarn at you. Um, a very lovely person emailed me um, about the baby Aosta sweater, asking me if I had a version of the adult pattern that had the button up detail down the uh, raglet, and I don't. But I was like, funny you should mention it because I'm planning on kind of between this and the, and the Stanford sweater I've kind of been planning on experimenting with a button-up raglan because I think that would be really nice. Um, I think I would probably use some backing fabric to reinforce, oh sorry I've gotten really sneezy. Yeah a button-up raglan and I thought a stripy version would be really nice and quite chic. So yeah the plan is to use this as the main colour, this is the contrast colour and I'm going to hold that with again from the scrap Mo and it's not really scrap because they're you know whole ball whole balls of yarn but um leftover yarn this is Filcolana Tilia in the shade 100 which is their bright white so this is slightly yellow so I'm hoping this will neutralize it a little bit um I've got off the swap that's ooh, here's the swatch <laughs> behind me this one um and I think it looks really nice. And then for the other mohair, um, just because I don't particularly enjoy knitting at a four ply gauge, uh, so I would rather hold with a second strand and bring it up to like a DK weight. Personal preference, I'm gonna use a four, mil four millimeter needle US six, um, but obviously you can use a thick yarn, like a sport weight yarn would be great, um, or a light DK and just help work with a single strand. But I'm gonna hold it with um, a Longevec Anna Merino. This is the shade Royal. I think that Anna gifted this to me when she launched her yarn and I've been meaning to use it that whole time because that was a while ago, that was 2021, I think. I know it was during lockdown, I think. Time, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, the yarn has sat very sad and unused since then. But now it's getting used, so that's great. Um, so yeah, I think this was gifted. I know that's really bad, and I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I can't remember. I can't remember if I bought this or not. I'm just saying that to make it clear, so you know, from like, yeah, advertising standards, all that jazz. But yeah, this works up really beautifully. Um, I think they're a very nice match. So yeah, very excited about this. So I think that is going to be my next cast on I think. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be really cool. Again, I'm planning on doing quite a high neck, but I think just as I don't think I want it to be double folded. I think I just want like a funnel neck. I think that'd be cool. But I'm gonna see how I feel. I tend to cast on, go straight into the oak and then apply the collar later. So I'll have some flexibility. Um, but yeah, I think the ratio of stripes is four rows in main colour, two rows in contrast colour. I think that's going to be really cool. So yeah, excited about this. I think it'll be great. The next project is actually also going to be using uh, River Knits Nini, Neen, 
no no whatever it is i'm so sorry i think it's named after a bird i just i should look up how you pronounce it i'm really sorry i know that that is like a bugbear of a lot of people i know it's me being lazy i'm sorry um but it's going to also be using the mohair from T peak district yarns uh, that i spoke about in the last podcast in this wonderful shade of like limeade is how i described it but it's called fern beautiful um and again i will put that is the swatch and it kind of knits up to like a, a more of a lemony color really pretty i'll have b-roll of the swatch there in my drawing i realized that i'd accidentally drawn one of Anne Vencel's designs it's not going to be like that i want it to be a cardigan um i think a cardigan in like this ribbed lace pattern would be really nice um i want it to have a contiguous shoulder because i, I think for spring that would just be really lovely um so yeah that is the, the cast on after that i'll be curious to see how long that takes me to knit because i don't have a lot of patience for lace knitting but we'll see i can i can learn to be patient so yeah that's what i've now got planned for this it's nice to have a firm idea in mind because i love this yarn and i really want to get it used sooner rather than later because it's too pretty to be sat in stash and then lastly this month i want to start working on my free um let lopi pattern um i can't remember if i spoke about this in the last video or not but every year i release a free sweater design um around the end of the year or the start of the year this year because I, I ran out of time last december um but yeah it's a very simple circular yoke um design i did update the grading on the last release but i don't think i'm going to with this one if you've knit the path that it was the um nova sweater last year if you have made that and have feedback on the grading I would be grateful to hear it because where it is a free pattern I don't have it tech edited or test knitted um just because I I don't have time it's like I like knitting with is tech slopey it's a is another pattern um I hope that makes sense so I'm kind of running on fumes now <laughs> I've done all of my talking so I'm running out of words so I probably should stop filming but oh well here we go but yeah this was last year's one uh, as i say this is called the nova sweater and it's available for free in 12 sizes um up on ravelry and also my website um it's just a color work yoke uh pretty simple these are the colors that i've chosen for this year's one um main color is ash i will put the shade name of this one down below but it's a lovely sky blue again um really really pretty i think they're gonna work up beautifully together um here is some b-roll of the design idea this pattern i feel like is very horizontal i want this one for this year to feel more vertical i don't know if that makes sense in my mind it does <laughs> uh yeah so i think that's gonna be fun it'd be good to get the ball rolling on this um it's knit on a four and a half millimeter us7 needle very simple, really fun, relaxing knit, just stocking out through the body and sleeves, which as you can tell from this video has been what I've been enjoying lately. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Okay, I am going to wrap it up here. Um, I feel like I've kind of lost momentum as I've gone through this video. So sorry if it does feel lower energy or more manic energy towards the end, I apologize for that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope I haven't spoken too quickly. I think I have. Sorry. As always, the best place to find me is Instagram. Um, I post most days. Uh, I'm not good at replying to DMs though, so please don't please don't DM me because I won't see it because I get anxious and mm. <laughs> it's a whole thing. But yeah, um, enough rambling. Yeah. I will aim to film again in October. Um, it will be. It's getting near to our wedding. So I don't know, I might see how I'm feeling and then it'd be good to do it in October though. I, oh yeah, I'll do, oh yeah. I'll see you in about a month. Um, I hope that you're well wherever you are in the world and I will talk to you soon. Bye.